Hi guys, <laughs> welcome to another episode of Opinionated. Thank you guys for still watching us. Uh, we have a very interesting topic for today, <laughs> and we decided to talk about therapy and why. <laughs> why are you doing? <laughs> I'm more conscious about how I'm holding the mic. It's okay. We'll start. We'll start off with it. Uh oh, we decided to go by our uh, fake names. Mm. Jane and Joanne purely because this is Jane Do and Joanne Do purely because we think it's more about the story than about us and we don't really want to talk about us yet and hopefully when we have a lot more subscribers and you'll actually really want to know who we are we probably just well do a really good <laughs> episode on that but thanks to the three people who watched up yes. this episode thank you for the few of them who actually watched yeah. us and we are excited and we hope that you guys enjoyed Wait, um, so your she started therapy I'll very say, recently, yeah. like since November. I haven't November. ever gone for therapy at all. Never, never. counselor, nothing. Oh, that's kind of <laughs> explains <laughs> all my issues. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. I'm here. I am. I still <laughs> the same issues. Nothing really changed. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I started therapy about two and a half months ago. I've actually always wanted to go for therapy. I'm a firm believer that therapy is essential to everybody, and uh, it's like I mean, I have no professional uh this thing disclaimer right now. I'm not a professional about this. I haven't done I've done my bachelor's or my master's or anything in psychology, psychotherapy, yeah. psychiatry, anything to do with the field of mental health, but I did do 2 years of psychology in school and I think I know everything. Now. But I'm joking, I don't. <laughs> but I actually always wanted yeah. to go to therapy since I was since I knew what therapy was yeah, because we're it, just purely speaking on personal experiences. Yes, very much so and personal opinions. Yeah. But obviously you can always correct them and tell us about it as yeah. well. I always want to go to therapy. Always wanted to purely because it's like you get to go to someone once a week and mm. just like dish out on your life on them, mm. and then you go to sleep. Like you don't have to waste your friends' time, waste your <laughs> own time. No time is wasted. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. So uh, we've had a lot of shitty things happen to yeah. us. Okay, I know affordability is one thing, but other than the fact that you know you have a job now and you can afford therapy, yeah. was there anything? something some other valid reason why you decided to go for therapy now and not like when the act I know recently something shit yeah, happened yeah. but I think worse shit has, has happened, happened before, before. Uh, I feel like I started now because I thought like you know what uh, I'm 25 this year and it's kind of really time to just work on my shit there's a there's a limit of how much I can do through diet and exercise and uh, feeling only good vibes and surrounding with good vibe people there's a limit of how like a lot of things that happen to me is purely because I also attracted to myself because I don't really believe in the manifestation part of it but purely I feel like subconsciously you kind of bring in certain issues that happen like there's been things that have happened to me have been like a very recur- rec- recurring mm-hmm. thing and this one I was just like it's about time to end the cycle end the habit right then and there and the best way to do that was to do it through professional help cuz i think my friends have been tired of hearing about my bullshit so i started therapy about a month ago i wanted to ask you another thing so what is your opinion on this okay because um i remember watching i think a youtube video i'm not sure where these people were like they they go for therapy and they've decided they would never ever date a guy or a girl who's who isn't in therapy would do you have this thing where you will date only guys people only who are who are, who are in therapy, therapy? Oh, that's a very good question, actually. So when I was a little more naive, I thought like, yeah, if I'm in my twenties and I'm not in therapy, and five people in the twenties are not in therapy, what are they doing with their lives? Mm-hmm. But now that I'm in my twenties, it's not that. It's not something people want to change. Mm-hmm. But as it comes to the fact that would I date someone who isn't in therapy? Well, honestly, I need to date them first to see if they need therapy. <laughs> but knowingly, if I'm attracted to them, they probably need therapy. <laughs> so oh <my> God. <laughs> at this point. <laughs> I would say you need to. I will try mm-hmm. to probably. So it's not about actually. It's not about therapy though. If they are actually doing something very much in life to self betterment mm. towards the idea of self betterment, and they have something that's actually working for them, mm. fair enough. Like mm. I'm not going to sponsor therapy. I can't ask them to go for me. <laughs> so yeah, no. Yeah, I know that you've like cried in therapy. Oh uh, no, I haven't no, cried. cried after therapy. Yeah, because one mm. of the things I'm working through is crying in therapy. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm just like, they're gonna judge me for crying. Yeah, but like, like no. what? Like, so if you start huh? crying in therapy, do they like console Watch you? you? <laughs> yeah, mm, that's that, that's why I don't cry yet. <laughs> I'm like, do they console me? Do I console myself? Yeah. But um, yeah, then you actually do cry in therapy, and they just I think watch you like a psychopath. <laughs> I don't know. Actually, I haven't cried in therapy yet. I generally like hold back mm. in. Uh, but it's supposed to be very therapeutic. But too do you be. get like so? I've also see all mm. of this 
purely from books and series yeah, that that's fine. so uh, they don't really give you advice right no, they no, kind no, of no. Uh, nudge you towards finding your own conclusions and everything they don't right? even nudge you they just help you ponder over your thoughts and okay. like when like this is like if my therapist is here right now they yeah. tell Stop rambling. Get back to the topic. Cut my name off. <laughs> But like you know, they don't really nudge you. It's more yeah. like you're just overthinking to them, and they kind of help you realize when you're yeah. saying because like everybody, everyone like the answers to your issues are with you. It just I feel like we all overthink, but we're not overthinking in the right direction, right. and that's why we don't have the answers to half our questions. So the idea of therapy is basically, especially when it's someone who you don't know, mm. they are not your friend, they are not your acquaintance not your family member nobody that they are obligated to be nice to you or obligated to tell you like it's okay it's all going to be okay mm-hmm. because like one of the things i told in therapy was like this is this has happened to me why did this happen to me yeah. it's so unfair but you know like i don't know what to do about it and then they said you know what? not everything in life has to make re- make sense <laughs> like at least for me personally it's been like all the things that i have learned all these principles all these morals that i have put myself on to and i've held myself towards i've uncovered as actually not real aspects so of like, life so like do you not get frustrated like oh yes you get frustrated yeah that's the thing i did definitely get frustrated because it was just like it's kind of like see being in therapy is very important to know that you're going to be telling your like you're going to be contradicting your own self hmm. and then you're just going to be able to like you can't defend yourself to a therapist because that's like <laughs> what are you there for you know <laughs> you don't ever ask questions or anything back no i just be like oh hi how have you been or something but then i don't really care about the answer <laughs> cuz i'm just like i am paying just for my shit and it's like yeah. it's one hour i get within every two weeks to just like yeah. completely shit put my shit on to someone and not feel bad about it cuz that's the thing you know when you tell your friends about your issues or whatever at least for me i generally went a lot to a lot of my friends at the con- at the same time and at the end of it i was like man i waste so much of their time telling them bullshit about my life mm-hmm. and this is one place i don't feel that guilt even though it's actually stupid because when my friends come to me with their issues i've never felt like why am i yeah. listening to it yeah i'm genuinely open to hear about it and also like they take a lot of notes right yeah I, do you ever get curious like what did they write mm, yeah 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 i wonder that's the thing so i do my therapist uh, therapy sessions online right mm-hmm. so it's not like i can see when they write mm-hmm. but like it's kind of like she has like a note thing so like she's typing Mm-hmm. and like the screen you can like kind of see the reflection so i could be like the yeah. uh, like at the edge of like crying <laughs> and i'm trying to like read through her glasses reflection to be like what she's writing about me yeah. but no i try to like not really look into it because i'm really really thinking yeah. that i've spent a lot of time and effort and like a lot of thought has gone into being in this position in life yeah. and i don't really want to uh, like like yeah, really impede dig- her process yeah and d- dig my own grave in this aspect <laughs> cuz like See, finding a good therapist is a very important yeah. thing. It doesn't really happen click for everybody at one yeah. shot. Does your therapist laugh and stuff? Like, do you talk yeah, about the dumb yeah, shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I've cracked some self-deprecating jokes, and she <laughs> has laughed at me, and I'm like, oh yeah, she thinks I'm funny. <laughs> and like, does she ever like feel emotionally upset or sad? Or she, anything? yeah. So she does feel like she yeah. really shows a lot of empathy. In that, uh, in empathy, not sympathy. Empathy and compassion is the only thing I get from her. because that is her job <laughs> but like she definitely shows a lot of emotions towards yeah. it because like i feel like i take my issue personally is just like i don't really feel a lot of anger mine's more like a sad approach to things if something happens i'll be like instead of saying oh my god this happened to me how could it i'll be like oh no it happened to me <laughs> why it happened to me and then i kind of yeah. i dwell into the pity of it all so she actually shows me how i should be feeling about the emotion so she be like that happened how dare they do this to you what could why what were they thinking like why would they do that to you they were your friends you know whatever the hell it is that she tells me it makes me realize that this is emotion supposed to feel yeah. so she helps me understand what i should be feeling mm. without really telling me like you should be angry it's just like i work off her emotion to be like oh that's mm. right and i realize that every friend i've told the same issue to they yeah, all have yeah. the same reaction yeah. but i might have that reaction so mm. it is your therapist definitely is someone that helps you yeah. like they feel for you because they are genuinely spending their whole hour on you mm. and they really like help you dwell into your issues we actually did a survey which is like i mean i'm going to say yeah, yeah, yeah. uh we actually did a survey we both sent it to a bunch of our friends shout out to all 147 of you guys who did it thank, thank you, you so much so much <laughs> we did not that. expect it yeah but honestly like when we were sending out we thought maybe like five or like 10 yeah, responses yeah like 10 best end. yeah two 10 like us. yeah exactly i thought like maybe 10 of hers yeah. and 10 of mine would respond yeah, exactly. so we got like 147 responses and it's actually That's really very interesting uh, i asked very general questions so like have you been to therapy did you go voluntarily like a lot a lot of questions yeah. Yeah. have you ever had a therapy session is another question i asked and like 90 sorry 66% of people have not been for therapy mm. which i mean the fact that i send this for survey out to people who are in the age of i've never been in therapy either 
Yeah, I, I, even I don't know that many people. people I know like a therapy. very small sect of, amongst my Fun, friends. Funnily enough, most of my friends who I know who are in therapy were all ones who had done psychology in school. So I think maybe a part of us kind of knew how important it is. Are you? I asked a lot of questions about like you know how did you feel after therapy? Most people said they mm. felt good, which is ideally how you should be feeling. Some people really felt bad, which okay, that's completely understandable. Maybe it could have been that you didn't want to go. Maybe, maybe it triggered. Was, some maybe it triggered hidden. something really bad. You were not able to talk about. You didn't yeah. want to talk about. So I'm able to go involuntarily as well. So yeah. I have been to therapy both involuntarily and voluntarily. Oh, okay. That's like a very fun part of it. So when I went for therapy first, it was like more like a counselor session in school. Mm. It's very dark turn. My grand had passed away. Like my dad's dad, I was very very close to him. But like a week and a half before he passed away, I had a very bad. Like I started having very bad feeling mm-hmm. in class one day. I was like something bad's gonna happen. Something bad's gonna happen. And I kept telling my friends and my family, but everyone was like, yeah. "What? What's gonna happen?" And I was like, "I don't know." He sent some extreme danger, like in the foreseeable future. And then like few days before he passed away, I had a dream that he passed away. Mm-hmm. And like I woke up in the morning and complete like night sweats, and I was like, "Why would I dream about it?" Because he was like a healthy, fit to go man. So I was like, "Why would I dream this?" You know. And then that day, I actually called him and I spoke to him on the phone, and he mm-hmm. actually spoke to me like he knew it was the last time he was going to speak to me. And this is my granddad who always told me he'd outlive my dad, just because he was very, very, very healthy. Doesn't smoke, doesn't drink, whatever. Good genes or whatever, right? So when he told me like, "Oh, okay," like he spoke to me very much like you know he's not going to be around, and I was just like, "Yo, why are you talking to me like that?" And he didn't really say anything. It was kind of like he and I both knew it was the last conversation we're going to have. I don't know why. And then two days later, the day he actually passed, like I the whole day I was like very off. Kept I was expecting bad news the entire day, and when the phone rang, I just knew someone died, and I was quite sure it was him. It was very weird. I pick, I picked up the phone. You know, my mom was like, "I don't even want to know what the conversation is." My parents were like sobbing. I went to go pack my bags to go to India because I was like, "This needs to be done right now. I can cry about it later." I didn't cry the whole day. I didn't cry in the flight. I didn't cry during the whole funeral process. I didn't cry talking to the relatives on the phone. I was the one who picked. It was a car accident. Three people died. It was like a very traumatic experience in the family. I handled it with complete grace. You no, know, but you know what happened for me? It was just like I knew it was gonna happen. What's the point of crying about it? But then what happened was basically my parents took about a year and a half to like get out of it. Yeah. I took longer purely because one, I didn't cry because I was just like right now I am able to take care of the situation purely because I knew this was coming. Yeah. So I was mentally prepared. Everyone was nobody obviously prepared for such an intense family problem to come up. So I kept taking all the shit that needs to be taken, like the chefs and the funeral work and mm-hmm. talking to people on the phone and like call, like writing the obituary in the paper, whatever things need to be done. Like I was more into all of that. I was sixteen, by the way. Mm-hmm. It's not like things sixteen year old needs to do. Yeah. But what happened more that I realized was I felt extreme guilt for my granddad's death. I went back to school, no problems at all, and I was very close to him. So I think at one point my mom thought. She is insane. She needs help. So my mom came to school for whatever reason, and then they made me go to speak to a school counselor. Mm-hmm. So she was like, "Oh, there's something difficult happened in your life." And I was like, "Yeah." And I told her the entire story. So she's like, "Tell me what happened in detail," because she's trying to make me cry about it. Yeah. She gave me a tissue box to hold. She told me like a lot of things, and she kept trying to like hit me to cry because yeah. she thought like that would really like break me kind of thing. I spoke. I went. I spoke so coolly. Told her the whole story, and then she was like, "That you must. It must be very difficult for you." And I was like. Yeah, but you know what? I saw it coming. I didn't do anything about it. Like it was in my control. I didn't control it. So this is the consequence of my own action. How could I be upset? That was like my mindset basically. And I remember she made me write a letter to my granddad. Like you know, like he's in the afterlife. Write a letter to him. So hoping that that would make me cry. Nothing. It took me a good, I don't know, two years to eventually get over the guilt. But basically, I would keep like, I wouldn't say I prayed, but I would keep praying to be able to meet him once more, say goodbye properly, kind of a thing. So one fine day, I had a dream. Like I think I kept talking about it so much that I had a dream up subconsciously where he came and I met him and we had this whole conversation. I showed him all around, yeah. and then like you know, and I told him like I'm so happy you came. I know it's very hard for you to come down, but you here you are. I'm so glad we got to meet and speak. I know we won't meet each other again, but like you know, I'm so happy you came. And I had this whole conversation with him subconsciously. Woke up fine as a bird. That's not a fucking game. <laughs> the fuck is fine as a bird? <laughs> But basically, free as a bird. I woke up with so much. I felt so bad immediately. I was just like, holy smokes! Like I figured out like the life, you know. Mm. That's the thing. That's how I went involuntarily for therapy. After that, now I am in therapy because <laughs> <laughs> because of the things I can't control in life, but I think I can, and that is the change. <laughs> but yeah, so I understand how people feel the same after a therapy session because I didn't feel any difference after the involuntary. You want mm-hmm. purely because I don't want to be there. I was forced to go for it. So, so guys, one of the questions we asked was, if you haven't been to therapy, why haven't you? This is one of our most varied sect of answers that we got. Yeah. So, and this was like, didn't you know? There was like fifty-eight percent who said that they didn't have a reason to go, which was fine. 
and there's a lot of people said like they don't like to share stuff with a stranger which i completely agree it is a very difficult thing to do to mm. talk about yourself and put yourself out there when you don't know yeah. who the other person is but once you do it so i have a friend of mine who actually he has when he ever he has had an issue in life yeah. like he doesn't talk to his friends he doesn't talk to me doesn't talk to anybody else he talks to strangers strangers in the shop like you know in a bar strangers in a chai shop wherever he goes he purely talks to strangers on the road who he's willing to have a conversation with him obviously about the shit that he goes through in life and he he's always told me it's so liberating to talk to someone you will never see again because mm-hmm. you don't really feel the judgment st- judgment or the stress of putting something yeah. on someone you don't know get yeah, that as well like the don't like mm. to chest of that's completely fine as a personal choice i feel like yeah. when you really want to you will because like i think everyone has their like you need to take your time and really yeah. decide yeah. to do when it when you want to go for it then there's a lot about i talk to just i just talk to a friend who i trust which is really good that's actually it's always better to talk to somebody than not talk to anybody yeah. at all so that's actually really good as well yeah there's one person who actually said about like you know why haven't you gone for therapy they said a fear that too many closed doors may reopen which is a very good point to say i feel like but do you think everyone needs therapy i know like therapy will obviously benefit everyone but do you think everyone needs therapy see the thing you know everyone see i truly believe everybody needs therapy that is my genuine honest opinion that i don't think there's a soul in the world who doesn't need therapy mm. what age i do not care i don't care you have trauma i don't care what kind of trauma you have everyone completely has to go but the only way you will know whether you need it or not is only if once you start it because it isn't like a subscription that yeah. you're just going to have to go for life or like you know they're going to yell at you thinking ah oh, you didn't finish it's not like it's an educational thing that you need mm. to start and stop you can start at any point you want you can stop yeah. at any point you want but there's like a lot of control on it ask you why are you here they will never ask you that <laughs> i thought that would be the first question like you no. know how you go to a doctor's office and they be like okay tell me what's wrong like ah uh, uh, no no I no when like, i i'll tell you what so, do i tell you i'll tell you what i have what happened in my first therapy session so before i had the actual session there is something called an intro session Hmm. which is the exhausting part about therapy yeah. i feel like if you switch when you switch therapists you have to explain this whole thing again to people so you tell them about who you are where you are like they actually take down very important notes about yourself they ask you about like where do you stay are you an only child do you have your family in the picture do they stay close by like very general ge- hmm. geographical so yeah, things yeah. that they ask you they state beha- your context basically yeah then they ask you about like behavioral patterns like do you sm- smoke do you drink a lot of other things related to those kind of questions but it is something that everybody should try mm-hmm. it's really really it's something you should try and like if people are scared to open doors yeah. it's time to really open them guys like it really will help it will suck for the moment i can guarantee you you might think for a good few days saying what the fuck was i doing all this while yeah but it really helps after that yeah. then a lot of people said about they couldn't find the time but they don't have the strong enough reason to go also it's expensive therapy is very expensive it comes from a house where parents will not sponsor this so like agreeable these are actual genuine valid points yeah, yeah. of your not being in therapy can come from most of the uh, pointers are money money money, money. money like they money. want to go but it's affordability which <laughs> shit <laughs> which so joan has a solution no, to be for out it's fine just have to yeah, put it's not sponsored, sponsored or anything guys yeah, like it's just sponsored. genuinely so want help i'll just tell people who have actually care basically guys i actually want to tell people who actually want at least give therapy a shot i actually go for therapy based in india cuz i have like a god from a friend of a friend yeah. or whatever but there's actually a site called mindtribe.in on instagram So I know two friends who have tried it out and that's why I'm talking about this it with This is not sponsored. Not yes. sponsored. I mean I really wish we were <laughs> but we are not. <laughs> so it's called mindtribe.in. I will put the thing up on the story and all the linking will be done and all that jazz. So it's actually really cool if you go to their website, uh, go to their Instagram page, they have a link tree. We have a link tree too guys. Check out all of our things. <laughs> and then if you go to their um, subtle plug. Yeah. So they have something in their link tree called free mental health counseling. So ideally what happens with this yeah. page is they give you one free session. Okay. I think it's about 45 minutes or a 1 hour session and then you can just talk to them. So for people who don't want to commit to it, the people who don't want to spend on it, give the 1 hour session a chance. That's what yeah. I would say. Mm-hmm. It's free anyway. So I'm going to they're not going to take your credit yeah. card details, nothing absolutely not. So first 1 hour is purely purely free. And then if you like the idea, I don't know what their rates are. I'm not really looked into the rates, but I think it's no. still in, definitely going to be cheaper for UA kids than it is what we will be paying here. and uh, for the people who say like they can't do it at home those are like very genuine concerns i don't have a solution right now if i can think of something i will tell you if i was doing this publicly i would have offered you my home <laughs> but that i can't do right now <laughs> and uh, there's a really one thing i really like about the site is basically they have something called why do you want to start counseling and you get to choose an option so it could be between stress anxiety depression romantic relationship family issues unhappiness in life education slash career related or other 
and it could be like addictions of whatever kinds it could be a habit related yeah. issue any any issue because i feel like when people think therapy they think mental illness yeah. and they think of the most drastic situations and stuff which is ideally not what it always is it could always yeah. be something really small as well like it's completely it's not a, supposed to be such a big deal as people make it sound to seem yeah. you know so whatever if you go to this whole site and then you get then you just fill out the soft this whole thing they will actually contact you okay okay they i think there's a little wait on because did it's you a, try this before you went for therapy no i didn't i found out about a little later but okay. basically i have two friends who tried it because one both one couldn't afford it the other yeah. one didn't know where to go so my friend who couldn't afford it she actually found us as an instagram ha- link she gave her a shot mm-hmm. she had a session with one person for for free she really liked it and then she also went to check out other options as well because i had given her some options by that point but yeah. yeah so basically like this is a really really good site and i feel like all the people who really want at least give it a shot go for it guys like it's not this it's not going to cost you anything yeah. it's right there it's very easily available in this app then there's a very big debate on if you have diet and exercise you can just if you have a healthy diet if you can exercise. substitute therapy yeah. for diet and then exercise, exercize. I wouldn't say sub it I wouldn't even say it goes hand in hand because like it really depends on people I think it really depends on the issues like I think therapy most definitely will work wonders for each and every human being and I'm sure every human can find solace in it um there is no denying that but I just think the process will um have different paces of speed for each human being um so I just think if you're using therapy as like something like a personal growth it's brilliant go for it but I think if you're trying to use it as a solution to a problem there are a lot of other factors that you need to assess and uh you know consider and uh, take um take consideration of basically um i just don't think especially based on the extremity of the problem um um i just don't think you should just jump into it straight up without um yeah so like for example having a really intense um, series of nightmares and i've always had it but i just like normalized it for myself and uh, like to a point where right now so for me it was just like okay when i go to sleep it's like an annoying sleep that's all you know um but like recently it's like started to you know kind of um, uh trickle down into even when i'm awake like not the nightmares as such but the repercussions from the night like uh, whether it's disturbed sleep i'm just like feeling exhausted but actually more than exhausted it's more like also in the night like i've started like getting these anxiety kind of uh, anxious moments in my nightmares so like where i hold my fist tight or like i clench my teeth or things like that and that really causes a lot of physical hindrances when i'm awake in the day so that's the main reason like i i it was completely toxic for me to have like my friends like keep telling me you know you shouldn't have normalized it in the first place you know that itself was like such a crazy thing i know i understand that uh but i did <laughs> i was stupid um uh, i know therapy is like going to benefit every single human being but therapy for me is going to be a much slower process the thing about yoga is it gives me like double benefits like i get to wake up in the morning and i get to have like a routine i get to also like invest in physical fitness you can go for yoga you can do a lot of things okay like i'm not saying these things don't help they definitely help it helps put a routine in place having a routine having a good diet having like a good stability in life having a good support system these all things definitely add to a better life you know like having a good life all these things are very very important and i feel like only when you go to a therapist will you actually be you you only choose to be vulnerable with a therapist okay the first thing was you willingly going so like you're just like you're spending all this money why are you going to hide yourself from them so there's no point of view that you're going to like try to uh lie about or you know whatever it is because you're trying to really benefit and better better yourself and only when you go to a therapist and you really like there were so many things that i knew about myself to be like a core a moral value that i had or a core belief system that i had so one thing i was always be like is every time someone fucked up fucked me over and then i would just not get angry with them i would just be like okay whatever it's fine they did what they had to do they did what they had to do was best for them whatever whatever but i just be like it's fine everybody deserves to be happy okay i'm a therapist you know like oh this happened to me and i'm really upset but like you know what it's fine they deserve to be happy i'll just be happy for them and she told me why do they get to be happy why don't you get deserve to be happy why do they deserve to be happy and i was like you know cuz everyone deserves to be happy they had a tough time before this whatever and then i told and then she's like okay but you had a tough time too so like you know why do they get to be happy now and i was like that makes sense and she like who told you everyone deserves to be happy and i was like i don't know she's like no think about it who told you everyone deserves to be happy 
and i was like i don't know some instagram post i probably saw i was like in 11th grade or something because i think about it, not everyone life deserves to be happy there are a bunch of serial killers and whatever people out there okay fine those are like i can could be a mental illness thing that's like a whole different thing but i did you can think of a shit ton of people who truly don't deserve to be happy because they were absolute pieces of shit i could think about a lot of like really creepy men in life like you know like the ones that molest kids and the pedophiles or whatever they don't deserve to be happy ideally because like you can be happy after you've acknowledged your mistake repented for your mistake acknowledged uh, asked like you know done something towards to be a better person change accordingly and then you can be happy thing you feel like when you talk to someone unless is unlike guitar class or like running or the gym or yoga or you know writing down a journal whatever the hell it is once you speak to someone yeah you're put on a spot where you have like you are just vulnerable you're choosing to be vulnerable and if you're not going to be vulnerable they'll pick out on they'll be like why aren't you vulnerable why do you say it this way like they'll actually analyze every word you say also about your thing about nightmares right you don't have to go to therapist and be like i had this nightmare i had that time but i have constantly had nightmares and then they'll tell you to like keep a dream journal so like ideally you should just do that right now because i used to do that when i had bizarre nightmares mine is just like basically telling my friends about it immediately but ideally again if you tell them when it started they'll exactly find the root cause of why you're having these nightmares i know you think that you need to be telling them stuff but then it's like going to the doctor you can just be like i don't know what's wrong and they can help you figure it out together that's how therapy works can i try keeping a dream journal i can't and i don't want to because i find relief in forgetting my nightmare like at the second like initially when i was in college when i used to have nightmares yeah i used to write it down and it used to be imprinted in my head and it used to give me a lot of trouble so then because of that i just stopped writing it down i'm sure a therapist can help me with this like there's no denying that however relatively i think it's going to be a slower process uh, than me committing to yoga um i know they're capable enough to you know help me um drive to an understanding like i don't know you know help me get uh, to an understanding but it'll just make the process slower right and because i just right now i don't want to tap into like the root cause and all of that i just want some balance i just want to be able to have one night sleep properly and then i can you know think about how i can keep this as a permanent trait through therapy or whatever and i just know yoga is probably going to be like that um pain killer that i take but who knows you know it could fail just as well just like give it a shot and then see you know if there is no quick fix to it then <laughs> i might as well go down the road okay i can really get what you mean like i get that that's how your mind is uh like that's how you see this thing and that's how you want to go ahead with it but i feel like it's i mean it's interesting it's fine i get what you mean i just think maybe you should try a free session at least or like at least one session just to like you know see what you what's out there you know that's it also i'm very sure that i'm most probably i i could be potentially wrong i was like speaking to my friend and uh, what she said that was like i told her like do i'm starting yoga tomorrow and she's like what how like you thought you said it doesn't work for you <laughs> see it's like the same thing that i said about therapy right but i just feel like sometimes you really need to like be convinced of it to start uh i feel like then you can really uh seep in the benefits of it in some ways at least i can okay um so uh and i was like see the reason like before my purpose was different okay before like i was focused on my physical fitness and because of that i believe that pilates would work better than yoga and it did um so i was like fully into pilates and she preferred doing yoga like, so then that's it she was like taken aback when i told her today that like Okay, I'm starting yoga tomorrow, and she's like, "What?" So I told her my first thing was that my current purpose is different, and um, so I very well. Uh, I I feel like right now it's like the same incident repeating in terms of uh, in the context of therapy as well. See, again, I'm not denying uh, the fact that it is going to benefit me and it is going to benefit everyone. I'm just saying that right now I have a better solution than therapy. and then therapy can maybe be something that i invest in as personal growth later on in life but right now i don't think therapy is my solution yeah so i'm very excited for you to try this out and i feel like once you find the temporary relief which you definitely will through yoga my god you definitely definitely will i but um, i think like we have a different approach to this because we are on different 
uh, I wouldn't say different uh, times in the journey. I feel like we have very different parallel roads to the same journey because I'm not saying that your way is wrong or my way is uh, right or wrong or anything. I feel like we're both kind of looking towards the same thing, but we have a very different approach. And uh, I'm not saying yours won't work, but I'm just saying that your way wouldn't work for me. But, uh, and I think I'm a little more confident that my way might just work for you. But then again, that's not my place to tell you to do. But I'm very excited for, I'm hoping that everybody else who can hear us right now will definitely give us their input and what way they've chosen or whether they've had like a, such an extreme conversation about this with themselves that they needed to figure out a way. But uh, I think that's what like the people listening to tell us what they think they would want to do. But I still recommend the free session, guys. Just give it a shot. Like it's not going to do anything. I mean, if you don't want to do it, I understand. But like, there's really no harm in trying it out. Therapy, another thing that comes is like the tough topic of medicines, which I don't want to comment much about. Yeah. Because I haven't taken medicines. I I'm open to the idea because I don't think there's anything wrong with taking medicines yeah. related to you know if my therapist thinks I should or my psychiatrist thinks I should and I should take medicine. Hand it really depends on what the issues you're targeting and what the medication is because it it is a trial and error thing mm. because. With most things in life, it's always a trial and yeah. error. Even like we go to a doctor for a normal general illness, like not even mentally. if it's like a skin care treatment. Exactly. Skin oh god, it's a very good example. Uh, really where do I begin? <laughs> yeah, because like they really, yeah. really, it take, it's a huge trial and error. They try multiple things. You go yeah. to different doctors, different dermatologists, different and medicines. The, the repercussions are just insane Crazy. I know it's like a very physical in your face kind of a yeah. thing as well and that's like one thing that does not work for everyone the same exactly. way and that is how therapy is guys it's exactly like skincare I f- actually find doing my skincare routine very therapeutic, therapeutic. yes like I, I could like be like I, I just I could use this time and just go to sleep for that extra yeah. five minutes it makes but it feel so good it makes my day I, I, I completely agree that's the yeah. thing like there are certain things in each day that for me it's making coffee well like one of my most favorite things at work other than working <laughs> is making my Nespresso I get such a kick out of it just I like know. the five minutes like and also like right after I make it and the entire pantry, pantry smells, smells of it, it. and oh, everyone god. goes like oh my god we all need coffee I now. know that smell oh that's it's so wonderful best. yeah so same thing with medicines it's mm. like it is a very much the skincare kind of of therapy <laughs> that's how I would say it because I'm really uh, not a liberal to speak about it I then I asked a very good another question I asked was like what age do you think someone should start therapy what do you think I don't know if I went um, I think 18 is honestly when I also hit emotional and all of that maturity but I think I, if I went before that I wouldn't really understand my purpose and it would just be like you going to the counselor and yeah. having nothing just that's personally okay? yeah, for me yeah, I don't yeah. think I would have been fit for therapy at least I, I don't know, I don't know, maybe even 18 was too young for me. I, for me, I feel a little differently. So first thing I feel like you kind of need, so for me, I've always felt like moment my kids hit like puberty, if I have kids and my kids hit like about the age of puberty, yeah. around then I start sending them for therapy purely because they'll be like, you know what, you're going through some changes and you know, you're But what if they don't want to? Oh yeah, I won't force it on yeah, yeah. Obviously it's not where you need to go, of course <laughs> not. I'll be like, I'm giving you, you the, give op- them the choice. I will yeah. give them the choice and explain all the things about the choice. Yeah. I'll be like, I went for a little later in life and I felt, I think it'll be better if you start going earlier. Mm. Maybe give it a try. Yeah, try it out. Like it, if you don't like it, don't like it. It's not like, it'll be like, even if you just want to go bitch about me there, you can. Cause it's yeah. not going to come back to me. Yeah. Cause I feel like a lot of things in, yeah, when you're younger, you don't really talk about because like, you need to like respect your parents and then you know, they could be wrong. And like, so my, like, I know my parents are wrong about a lot of things that they've done raising me. And I've actually pointed that out to them multiple times. And they have a great relationship because like, they're not like ruin my yeah. relationship with my family at all. Because it's, it's important conversation that need to, somebody yeah. needed to have it. And I started having it very young. Mm. Like, as I realized, as I've been self aware, I've made them aware too. To an extent where I know that I'm a mistake child. <laughs> so like, that is important enough for Because I was like, I have existential crisis. Why am I here? Why did you guys bring me here? Then I said, they don't want me here. <laughs> then I'm like, oh my God, nobody wants me here. <laughs> and then it went on from there. But it's a good conversation because like, it's, I don't know, it helps me. It helps me understand my purpose in life a little bit better. Because like now I feel like there was no expectation of things for me to be doing in this life because maybe it wasn't meant to be here in the first place but like now I can do whatever I want to do with it because there's no expectation of what I'm supposed to be here Mm -hmm. in the first place get it but like it's like my parents are very grateful you were educated enough and they give me the space enough to think of me as an adult to actually have these conversations with them 
sure they don't know about this podcast right now <laughs> but like hopefully when they find her they'll still be proud <laughs> not like you know what I- so like there's a, a concept in therapy where like ideally once you they teach you all the all the tools that you need to have like you know like to maintain the behaviors or the things that you have learned in therapy they just have to tell you like you know now it's time for us to take a break you go and like solve things out in your own life and if you feel like you need another therapy session we'll get back to it it's not like they keep minting money from you saying like yeah that's right I'm gonna get another buck like couple of mon- like money from them yeah. for the next week because once you give they give you the amount of what's like real life uh, skills that you need to be outside and like like work through the yeah. things that you want to work through you don't have to come back Mm. so like I probably will be in therapy until my therapist tells me to stop <laughs> but it's not something that you need to it's not a like it's not a subscription for life oh. would you put a kids for therapy yeah I mean I think I would do the same thing I would give them the choice like what age I, I think I, I don't know if I can give like a numerical age because it would really mm. depend I'd on like is, when they would yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, be open to having conversations with me and things like that I actually do send children for therapy if they had a very yeah. traumatic family life yeah that's i hope that. i don't give them that environment <laughs> yeah, i don't think you will be more aware of these things nowadays but yeah do you feel like your friends who have gone for therapy they seem different to you yes. good or bad yes um okay so one of my closest friends that it's really done her good mm. like genuinely made her um actualize a lot of mm. uh, it was a very good experience for her she's still continuing she just i think i think she's been through maybe like a couple of months only um but she's at a stage in life where she's really content and very happy and i think it might be the first time i'm actually seeing her that way oh that's really nice that yeah okay yeah yeah i actually one of the questions i asked was like how many do you do you know more men or more women in therapy and the answer was like uh, more like definitely people knew more women like 85% mm. said like more women in therapy than men. Yeah, me too. I I don't actually know. I don't know if it's because like guys haven't really opened up to me I don't know about the, yeah, they, that, that's therapy. the thing. I, I feel know. like see that's the thing you know like when people have asked me about therapy they're always just like so nudgy around they're like oh can I ask you something like oh you yeah, mentioned yeah, therapy yeah. and I'm like this is completely fine like you know I even don't even when I actually asked you yeah. like, are you comfortable talking yeah, about exactly. this? Yeah, exactly. And I feel like I don't know like I've, I it it it's for me it's kind of like you know like you find this place that like it's like you find like you know when like a girl asks you what your body outfit like dude your top so good where is it from and then you're like so excited to be like dude I got it from Jennifer mm-hmm. like that's kind of how I feel about therapy for like 25 bucks yeah like the the sale <laughs> yeah, when you yeah, got it you yeah. know where you should go like that's kind of how I feel yeah. about therapy and that's how I feel about most women who I know are in therapy like after you started going for therapy like I had all these questions but I don't know like I mean you can google it but I don't know if I will even relate to those yeah. answers yeah. and their yeah. scenarios but yeah no that's why I've been very open on therapy like I tell yeah. random people like I had like an, I had a zoom call yesterday about something and I could just told the girl like I'm sorry can we have it after 8.30 I just, but I was like I have 7.30 therapy till 8.30 can we do it after that and I actually finally deleted my message first because I was yeah. like is it too much information to give somebody but then I was like no and I put the message mm. back in you know and then finally enough she and she spoke about therapy after that because yeah. she had a lot of questions about therapy after yeah. the actual zoom call session because I feel like the more we talk about the more people will want to yeah. talk about I mean that, that, it also means that there are a lot of people who go for therapy who do not want to talk about it do not go yeah. ask people in your life who yeah, yeah. know her in therapy like I don't think bombard if they're them. comfortable they would yeah but if you guys want to ask, oh, you just ask, ask us oh my god <laughs> me her. I will answer I can talk yeah. about they can like, DM us forever. we have an anonymous link portal yes you yes, can yes. put in your questions there and yeah, we will we, get back we'll to you we'll try and be here for you <laughs> I, I will definitely be here for you I yeah. fucking love this conversation yeah. I could have it for hours and hours but unfortunately we don't have the attention span <laughs> so thank you guys for listening thank you so much yeah I really hope uh, mindtribe.in helps you guys I will link it hopefully they yeah. will and also if you want to know like about her therapy session or something, yeah you can I just could always ask my therapist us. if she has slots yeah. or if she has people who have slots yeah. you can you know? DM us if you're interested and then she can pick this conversation and up if you and if you don't want to talk to me like if you want to be anonymous about it you can always just use the link and yeah, talk yeah. there and yeah that's pretty much it thank you so much for thank listening thank you guys <laughs> And we will come back another day with another controversial <laughs> <Episode>. topic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But yeah, thank you guys.